Okay, here we go. Hi guys, uh, my name is Matthias Svensson and I'm one of the co-founders of uh, bloglovin.com. And uh, for you who don't know what bloglovin is, it's a, it's a blog reader uh, where you basically become a member and then you choose all the blogs you want to follow and then whenever one of them have updated, it shows up in your feed. It's, it's pretty much like your Facebook or Google Reader feed, it's just a lot easier. And uh, right now we have over a million people using it. And uh, we also throw uh, uh, a big awards during your fashion week uh, to celebrate the world's uh, top fashion bloggers from all over the world. Um, and uh, we've been uh, growing at a good pace. But what I want to talk to, uh, about today is, is uh, not that much about where we are today, but more about uh, how we got to where we are and how we got started. Uh, and I think that's a lot more interesting story. And uh, it basically started uh, uh, four or five years ago uh, when my brother had a genius idea when he was hungover. And he, he leaned over to me and smelled like booze and said, Matthias, we need to find a way to get free alcohol. <coughs> and my initial reaction was like, I was like, that's the smartest thing my brother's ever said in his entire life. <coughs> so, so we started thinking about different concepts. And the concept that uh, stuck, stuck with us is that we, need, we should build a review site for bars so we can go to all bars and review them. Uh, and we, um, we thought that we'd build it online, so we needed to find a bunch of coders and a, bunch of, uh, and a few designers. <coughs> which, which wasn't really that hard, finding a team, when uh, the quest for beer is a, is a really compelling thing, or a quest for free beer. Uh, so uh, uh, 10 minutes after my brother had the idea, we had the full team assembled, <laughs> and, uh, which consi consisted of uh, old friends who were really good at coding, and uh, uh, two, two friends who were good at building uh, uh, websites. Uh, and I think one, one, hour, uh, after, um, one hour after we, uh, my brother had the initial idea, we had the whole team gathered in his apartment and we started working out what it should look like. And we ended up working on it every weekend for six months. And, and after those six months, uh, we decided that my brother's apartment wasn't big enough. So we rebuilt uh, my parents' garage uh, in uh, Tabu uh, and made it into our base camp. Um, and at the same time, uh, we took a week off from working on uh, our uh, reviewing site. And uh, when we got back to working on it, everyone had the same revelation. Like, um, okay, this, this thing sucks. <laughs> it's like, okay, uh, no, no one's ever going to read our reviews about beer that we drank for free. Um, and uh, we, we had basically given up the option to go to university then, so we had one year free, uh, and, we'd, and we knew that we had to do something, otherwise our parents would be pissed at us. Uh, so we started, so we started uh, looking for other ideas. Um, so uh, idea number two uh, was to build uh, a fashion community. So we were there in, in Tabu. Uh, we were five guys wearing skateboard t-shirts and sweatpants. And we decided, decided okay, let's revolutionize fashion. 
<coughs> so what we did was that we bought uh, a bunch of Vogue, a bunch of L, a bunch of uh, InStyle or whatever you call and we started reading a bunch of fashion magazines uh, frantically and just cut off things that we found inspiring which was usually uh, girls with visible tits um, and, we, and we put them up all over the walls in, in my parents garage so we said okay okay now we feel inspired we know what to do uh, so we basically sat in that garage uh, for six months without ever leaving it almost uh, and ate all the din all the like food at my, in my parents house uh, and we were like we created this bubble where where within the bubble we we knew exactly what to do and what uh, fashionistas were gonna be excited about so we're doing that for uh, six months and then we decided okay uh, I think I think one of my co-founders had the genius idea that you know maybe we should ask someone who's interested in fashion if they like this uh, and we're like yeah that's <laughs> that's a good idea um, but at the same time there was some like a resistance in the team because we thought like because they won't know what they want before they see it because uh, we've been uh, uh, we saw that Steve Jobs quote um, and we thought that it made, made sense but after a while we decided okay let's let's bring together a bunch of fashionistas and see how they react to it so we, we had we had a bunch of uh, fashion bloggers invited to my um, uh, co-founder's parents house and his parents uh, made some tea and cookies um, good cookies uh, and um, and we, we sat down with these bloggers and you know like went through the concept we're like well on, on this community you'll be able to do everything you'll be able to upload outfits check out designs build clothes like everything and they and they just nodded for a while and then after like half an hour we asked them okay so what do you think about it and they were like yeah it's good uh, and we said oh, uh, uh, are, are you going to use it? And everyone's like, no. <laughs> uh, and we asked them, so why aren't you going to use it? They're like, because it sucks. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, once one person said that it sucked, it became, you know, then the others kind of woke up and they just started bashing us. They're like, you have no idea what fashion is. Uh, no one's ever gonna use this. The name sucks. You know, it's uh, kled.se. Uh, the layout sucks. It looks really techy. There's no purpose. And you know, they just ba came bashing on for half an hour. And then after an hour, half an hour, they're like, oh, sorry, we, maybe we went a bit strong on you. Um, and uh, I, I remember my feeling, I was on the verge of crying because uh, we'd been spending, you know, a year of almost all our time into pouring into these two projects and none of them worked. So, uh, we, b so we started picking up feedback from these bloggers so we said like, okay, so we need to get this working. Uh, how can we improve this? And they're like, okay, if you really want to improve this, let's do this. And started taking down, taking down different feedback. Uh, and I in between uh, one of those sessions when we were taking down feedback from them, uh, one of the bloggers uh, opened up her uh, computer and uh, opened, I think, 40 or 50 bookmarks with all her favorite bloggers uh, that she followed and th went through each and every one of those bookmarks uh, separately. And it took, I think it took her like 10 or 15 minutes to see if one of them had updated and after 15 minutes, she said, oh, no new updates. Uh, and we're like, you spent 15 minutes to figure out if one of your favorite blogs have updated. She's like, yeah. Uh, so, we, so we said, uh, you know that there are some services that help you with that. So you know exactly when they update. So we showed her Google Reader, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, I don't know, if, is anyone familiar with Google Reader? Okay, yeah, cool. Um, 
uh, it's, it's Google's own tool for following blogs. So we showed it to her and she said, no, 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 I'm not going to read blogs like this. It's too techy. It takes away all the fun of reading fashion blogs because it, um, it formats uh, the blog differently. You don't see the comments and you don't see the layout of the blog. So we said, okay, that's, that's really interesting. And, uh, and then I think we started thinking about that problem, like uh, in the back of our heads while we were iterating uh, CLED. Uh, and we started thinking like, this, this is a really, really interesting service be because it takes away the chicken and the egg problem that you have in most communities. You need members to get members. If we build uh, uh, a tool for people to read blogs, then it can be played in uh, single player mode. Uh, it, it becomes useful for one user uh, uh, as well as two users, you know. Uh, you don't have the sh chicken and egg problem. So we started thinking about uh, that problem and after a while we just decided, okay, let's build something uh, that makes it super, super easy to follow blogs. Uh, so Two weeks later, uh, we had our first prototype uh, um, launched, and it, it was we basically like, okay, let's make this as simple as simple as possible, so we don't have to code too much, and see if it, see if it works. Uh, and then then I remember like one, once we had the product out there, we started thinking, okay, so how how should we market this product? How how should we get members? Uh, so, so I remember I remember uh, you know being 19 years old and we're like hmm uh, maybe we should reach out to a tech blog maybe they'll cover us. So we decided to reach out to uh, a call, guy called Niklas Strand uh, who writes a blog called The Deep Edition and. Uh, we sent him an email, and uh, 20 minutes later, he wrote a blog post, and uh, this is for you Swedes. <laughs> or I, I can translate it into English. Uh, it starts with, I don't really like to talk down on Swedish entrepreneurs, but when the, the idea feels like it's been done a hundred times, I don't know. Uh, the site blogcall.com with the tagline, uh, follow your favorite blogs, uh, and I'm trying to find something that's new uh, and it just seems like uh, they've done a simpler version of an RSS reader someone knows what I missed and I, I remember reading I remember reading that post uh, then uh, and I we were so we were, yeah I remember the whole team almost like cuddling up they were on, on the verge of crying again mm -hmm. Because we were like, this is the third project and it's still not working. Um, so, so we're like, okay, so what should we do? What should we do? Um, so I think the last thing we did before uh, turning, uh, or like, uh, turning down the project, turning off the project, was that we emailed uh, the bloggers uh, that we'd been getting feedback from and we said, okay, so we built this product that uh, helps you follow blogs. What do you think about it? Um, and one hour later, uh, they were like, whoa, 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 this product is so awesome. And we're like, really? They're like, yeah, yeah, we love this product. Uh, and uh, they all started blogging about it and started adding our follow this blog product uh, uh, widgets. And, it, and it, it struck us. We're like, like that's, that's it. <laughs> we build we build the product someone needs, and now they're using it. <laughs> we're like it's it was because bef before then we'd only been, been building products that um, uh, we thought someone would use. Uh, I think we tried to create a demand, but on the, on this product it was more about simplifying an existing behavior, and they liked it. Um, and uh, after that, uh, the same week, we had uh, a, thousand, a thousand members signed up, and they were all girls. <coughs> so we're like, yes, <laughs> we love girls. <laughs> uh, 
And uh, uh, we start understanding that it doesn't really matter if that tech, tech journalist likes it or not. Uh, as long as we find a group of people who likes it, then that's, that's the group we're going to cater to. And thankfully, uh, I think there are more girls than guys on the world. <laughs> so it w wasn't a small, small group of people. Um, and I, I think uh, and w once we start starting the, the in initial, start getting some initial traction, it was all about like, okay, so how do we get how do we get more people to hear about this product? Um, so, then, so then we started, uh, so then we started um, starting talking to other people, uh, other entrepreneurs, and uh, and something that al came up a lot was that, <coughs> the, and everyone said like, okay, you need the traction. Uh, you need you need uh, you need growth to get growth, and we're like that's kind of lousy advice because <laughs> uh, we don't have any growth. How do we get it? Uh, and one advice that's str struck with us really strong is that if you don't have any growth, make it f make it feel like you have growth. So uh, we came up with this concept that we called um, uh, illusion of traction. Which, which was basically that we would um, reach out to uh, one blogger and say, uh, like, please, please write, please, please write about uh, blog call. Uh, like, uh, we'll we'll feature you on our site for uh, two months or something like that. And they're like, okay, uh, that's uh, I guess that's fair. So they wrote wrote a post about blog call. Um, and then we would uh, look up everyone who had that blog in their blog role, which was maybe 2,000 bloggers, and we would email each and every one of them, and we would say, um, uh, th this blogger or your friend has written about uh, blog call. You should do that too. Uh, but we didn't say that we'd feature them. And. Uh, when we did those kind of like really targeting uh, marketing things, uh, it worked really well. And as soon as one of those uh, bloggers uh, blogged about blog call, we would look up everyone who had had them in their bookmarks, and we did the same. And uh, we created this uh, um, uh, huge lists of uh, bloggers who linked to each other, and really, really created some kind of feeling that everyone was jumping on blog call, but it was really them and their friends. So we, we created this uh, kind of illusion of traction and it's, it's something that worked, worked really, really well for us. Uh, and the next, next thing after a few months, we so started thinking, started thinking like, okay, so uh, uh, and, and blog calls started growing and we came up to a few ten, tens of thousands of members. We started thinking like, okay, so uh, internet is global, uh, why aren't we? Like, we all speak, we, we all speak English, so, uh, so why are we restricting us with Swedish that only allows less than 0.1% of the global popula popula population to use our service? So why don't we translate it into English? And it was, it was really a big barrier for us because we said like, oh no, no, because it's going to be so much more, it's going to be a lot more uh, competitive uh, when we launch into a US or English market. Um, but it's not competitive if you don't have, if you have zero users, you have, you have, nothing, you have nothing to lose. So we decided to do the transaction, and then we uh, um, launched the site in English as well. And at the same time, we changed name from a blog called uh, to Bloglavin to give it more uh, international feeling. <coughs> and I, I remember, and I remember having, uh, we were thinking about like, okay, so how are we going to launch internationally? And everyone was telling us, okay, you need, 
you need the help of uh, PR people. But what we realized is that PR is great, but PR people suck. Uh, and I remember ha having, um, we got in a group of uh, PR agencies to do our international launch. And they charged us 5,000 euros for it. And what they did was they wrote a press release and, uh, and uh, sent it out. And then the, the next day, uh, they were like, whoa, 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 the launch went so good. And they were like running around, like trying to do high fives. And we're like, what went good? They're like, it got picked up on so many sites. So we asked them like, okay, show us which sites. And then they showed us uh, 20 or 30 press release aggregators that had picked up the story. And we're like, this, this, isn't, this isn't real sites. <laughs> this is just a bunch of ro robots uh, gathering press releases. They're like, yeah, yeah, but if someone search for blog loving now, we'll show up there. We're like, that's the most stupid thing uh, ever, you know? So we, we fired them instantly um, and, de and decided that, and decided that, okay, so if we're gonna do this launch properly, we need, we need to do almost like in Sweden, we need to get in touch with all these bloggers and get them to write about blog loving. So we started making uh, some calculation and we discovered that flying from Stockholm to London to New York to Tokyo to Stockholm and buying all these bloggers beer would be around 4,000 euros. Whilst, whilst recruiting a PR agency and having, uh, make, having them make a press release and blasting it blindly would cost 5,000 euros. <coughs> so we thought it makes a lot more sense uh, economically to just go all over the world all the time and visit all the bloggers and buy them beer. Um, and it was our strategy. Uh, and it worked really, really, really well. Um, so, uh, so we basically, yeah, um, we have a lot of sky miles. Um, so, so we basically went to each and every one of the cities, and we would uh, meet up with these bloggers, uh, and like have them out, have some beer, t tell them about uh, blog loving, and usually they said like, oh, this is a really cool product. And then we'd may maybe do a deal that we'd feature them if they wrote about us. And, w and when they did write about us, we'd look up everyone who, uh, who was linking to them, we'd email them, okay, this blogger is writing about us, you should too. And then we did the same, just traveling around the world. <coughs> and, then, uh, and then finally came our uh, big uh, breakthrough. Um, if, if we skip, skip ahead. Uh, a few years till now, when we finally were featured on uh, uh, Tabatinian, <laughs> which which gave a lot of uh, gave a lot of um, yeah, we've never been so proud, and n neither has our parents. They all live in Tabu. Um, uh, I think I think that's it for me. Um, <laughs>